Hey guys, sorry for the long delay. The inevitable happened. It's one word, and I think everyone can relate. Why do I have to link up so early? I already finished all my homework, so, um. Uh... Oh, right. Cutscenes. In Hyperpad, cutscenes are extremely easy to make and customize. Like, I mean, easy, easy, like, very easy. You probably don't even need to watch this whole video once you get the gist of it. Um, but please do. The more watch time, the more people gets recommended the series. And right now, we're trying to get some clout, so... Please. In fact, I think Hyperpad was actually originally aimed for creating interactive storytelling books full of cutscenes, animations, and sound. Wait, so it wasn't for making games and apps? That's right, it used to be for making books. Literally, one of the first things you would see on the website is an interactive book. Cool. Um, can we go on to cutscenes now? Okay, let's go. You have full control of the camera, with the screen behaviors, and with the transform behaviors, you can give life to your props by having them move, change colors, etc. Heck, use play animation to play frame by frame animations if you need to. There's so many things you can do with an object, it's crazy. Some cutscenes may automatically play through a series of events over time like it was a video, while some other cutscenes might require some interaction to continue the story, like having to touch the dialogue to progress. A lot of games utilize cutscenes, whether interactive or not, because it brings the plot together. If you just put the player into the game without any storytelling, they're going to have no context to what is going on. I know some games do that intentionally, where the player would have to find out about the plot by themselves, but in this video, we're going to work with cutscenes. I will cover two styles of cutscenes, Interactive and automative. Interactive cutscenes requires player interaction such as touch to progress the cutscene. This is perfect for tutorials and dialogue where the time between each action and event can vary between each player because everyone has a different reading speed or everyone follows a different pace. So instead of having a time limit of how long you can read a text, just have it so the player can move on when they're done reading. Now on the other hand, we have automative cutscenes. These cutscenes run independently without the need of player interaction. This is perfect for little tours and scenes where the same sequence of events will play every single time. So you can have it when the player reaches a certain point of a level, the camera automatically focuses on an object and then move to another object or maybe there's some animation involved. The important part is that players shouldn't be able to do anything during these cutscenes. And in Hyperpad, both of these styles are pretty easy to make. For automative cutscenes, you can have behaviors execute one after another. You can add delays between events using the wait behavior. You can utilize screen behaviors and transform behaviors to make your cutscene. I already have my scene set up and I already know what I'm going to do. You can use screen to point to have the screen move to a specific point or screen to object to move the screen to an object to emphasize an object or move the screen to a... Uh, move the screen manually. Now, there's so many behaviors, and going through all of them will be tedious and annoying. It will be best for you to try out this type of stuff for yourself, because I don't know what cutscene you're trying to make. Of course, if you have questions, you can join the Hyperpad Discord server and chat with us. I'll be happy to help. For my cutscene, I made it so when a player passes a certain point, it plays this cutscene. Notice that the controls are hidden during the cutscene. I don't want the player to be able to do anything during the cutscene. For interactive cutscenes, you would use the execute sequence behavior. What this behavior does is allow you to execute behaviors in a sequence. Duh. Every time it is executed, only one of its nodes will execute behaviors below. It will keep executing the next one until it reaches the end and resets. You can have it be executed by a touch behavior. So every time you touch something, one of these behaviors is executed. If you want multiple behaviors to be executed each time, use the behavior bundle behavior. It serves as a placeholder behavior to execute other behaviors, with the added bonus of forcefully executing behaviors from left to right. Normally, Hyperpad executes in whatever order it thinks it is best, but with a behavior bundle, you can forcefully execute behaviors from left to right. No, this one first, this one, and then this one. For my cutscene, I made a simple dialogue box. Whenever the player taps, it will move to the next part. Now, there's so many. 
possibilities with what you can make of Hyperpad, and I can only offer so many tips to make your cutscenes feel awesome. Experiment with motion tweens. Different transitions can give a different feel for a cutscene. Linear is lame, I mean, pretty standard, so spice it up with different motion tweens. Motion tweens are found in transform behaviors or screen behaviors, in any behavior where an object moves or where the screen moves. You can just tap on it and a whole list of auto motion tweens will pop up and you can choose whichever one you want. Use black bars. You can have black bars move from the top and bottom of the screen to signify a cutscene. This also makes your scene more dramatic. To make it work for all aspect ratios, set the anchor of the bars to the edge of the screen and toggle on relative position. Yay! Oh, also, make sure these objects are in the scene or the global UI layer. Utilize audio. Audio jungle. That's not what I meant, but okay. Audio can really spice up a cutscene, whether it's some background ambience or even some music. A quiet cutscene wouldn't be really interesting to players. Use gradients. Now, this is optional. It depends on the style of your game, what it looks like and stuff. But gradients can make for some cool effects like lighting, which can make your scene more eye-catching to the players. Animate your objects. Now, this is the hardest one in the list. Try animating your characters limb by limb. Facial expressions and movement really makes your cutscene stand out. This can take a lot of trial and error getting the exact results you want, but it's worth the amazing cinematic masterpiece that you will have. You could also use the play animation behavior for frame by frame animation. Now, you have your amazing cutscenes. And your next step is to show the world the awesome work you have created. Now, that's pretty much all I have about cutscenes. I was fairly vague about this topic because there's so many ways that you can make and put cutscenes together. And I don't want to restrict anyone to making the exact same template because that would be boring and that's just not fun because you don't have as much freedom. So I will leave it up to you guys to interpret what you want to do with your project and how you want to create it and put it all together. Please do anything you want. It's up to you because it's your project and you can be creative about it. Please have fun. That will be all for this video. If you want to see more content like this, please consider following our Instagram and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Comment what you would like to see next and you could be selected for the next video. See you later.